Vitamin D has long been known to help the body absorb and retain calcium and phosphorus, both are critical for building bone. Also, laboratory studies show that vitamin D can reduce cancer cell growth, help control infections and reduce inflammation. Many of the body's organs and tissues have receptors for vitamin D, which suggest important roles beyond bone health, and scientists are actively investigating other possible functions. Having been understood some of the crucial benefits of vitamin D to the functions of the body, we could summarize that it plays a big part in our daily living. And a deficiency of this could turn our physical well-being into an uncomfortable scenario. But after all of these, a question may arise, is this the only thing vitamin D can do for my body? How about protecting me from viruses? Is this also beneficial for me in preventing or fighting COVID-19? In this video, let us find out what vitamin D can contribute for us in countering the effect of COVID-19. This is as per studies, done or trials associating this vitamin contrary to deadly effect of the said virus. Stay tuned! Is there any link about vitamin D and COVID-19? Vitamin D is an essential component that helps your body grow and maintain strong bones, among other things. The main source is sunlight. Your skin absorbs the sun's UV rays and converts them to vitamin D. However, many people are lacking or receive insufficient amounts. This is especially true if you're older, don't eat well, or have a darker complexion. And if you get COVID-19, those low levels could put you at risk of being sick. Here's everything you need to know about it. Vitamin D and COVID-19 disease. While vitamin D improves immunity and reduces inflammation, scientists say additional research on its antiviral capabilities is needed. According to one study, those with insufficient vitamin D levels had a 7.2% probability of testing positive for COVID-19. Another study discovered that having high vitamin D levels may reduce your chance of severe COVID-19 infection, especially if you're a black person. Over 3,000 persons were participated in the trial, and their vitamin D levels were evaluated within 14 days of receiving a COVID-19 test. Black folks with just enough vitamin D in their blood, just above normal levels, were twice as likely to test positive as those with even greater levels. However, another study found that increased vitamin D levels do not reduce the incidence of viral infection, hospitalization, or COVID-19 severity. More than 1 million persons of European heritage from 11 countries were studied. People having a DNA mutation that allows them to have naturally high levels of vitamin D were also included. In a third research, administering vitamin D to hospitalized individuals with moderate to severe COVID-19 did not improve their condition or shorten their time in the hospital. Vitamin D and other health conditions. Not getting enough vitamin D may lead to or worsen these health problems. Older people and those with underlying medical problems such as the following are more likely to develop serious illness when infected with COVID-19 disease. Heart disease and high blood pressure. According to NCBI, vitamin D insufficiency is very common in the United States and worldwide. Several recent epidemiologic studies have demonstrated a strong association between vitamin D insufficiency and risk of CVD, risk of diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Several prospective studies have suggested that vitamin D deficiency predisposes individuals to increased risk of incident hypertension, IHD, sudden cardiac death, or heart failure. Initial randomized clinical trials of vitamin D in the treatment of hypertension have yielded mixed results, however, the study design of these trials limits definitive conclusions. Diabetes According to pubm.gov, vitamin D deficiency has been linked to the onset of diabetes. This review summarizes the role of vitamin D in maintaining the normal release of insulin by the pancreatic beta cells, superscript 2 cells. Diabetes is initiated by the onset of insulin resistance. The superscript 2 cells can overcome this resistance by releasing more insulin, thus preventing hyperglycemia. However, as this hyperactivity increases, the superscript 2 cells experience excessive Ca2 and reactive oxygen species, ROS, signaling that results in cell death and the onset of diabetes. 
Vitamin D deficiency contributes to both the initial insulin resistance and the subsequent onset of diabetes caused by superscript 2 cell death. Vitamin D acts to reduce inflammation, which is a major process in inducing insulin resistance. Vitamin D maintains the normal resting levels of both CA2 plus and RAS that are elevated in the superscript 2 cells during diabetes. Vitamin D also has a very significant role in maintaining the epigenome. Epigenetic alterations are a feature of diabetes by which many diabetes-related genes are inactivated by hypermethylation. Vitamin D acts to prevent such hypermethylation by increasing the expression of the DNA demethylases that prevent hypermethylation of multiple gene promoter regions of many diabetes-related genes. What is remarkable is just how many cellular processes are maintained by vitamin D. When vitamin D is deficient, many of these processes begin to decline and this sets the stage for the onset of diseases such as diabetes. Infections and Immune System Disorders Multiple epidemiological studies in adults and children have demonstrated that vitamin D deficiency is associated with increased risk and greater severity of infection, particularly of the respiratory tract. Severe lack of vitamin D causes rickets, which shows up in children as incorrect growth patterns, weakness in muscles, pain in bones and deformities in joints. This is very rare. However, children who are deficient in vitamin D can also have muscle weakness or sore and painful muscles. Falls in older people. Older patients can reduce their risk of falling by consuming the recommended daily allowance of vitamin D. It should come as no surprise that falls are the leading cause of serious injuries in older patients. According to the American Geriatric Society, each year about one-third of Americans aged 65 and older fall, leading to hospitalizations, admissions into long-term care facilities, and even death. And while many health problems, including arthritis, poor balance, muscle weakness, poor vision, dementia, and certain medications may increase fall risk, vitamin D deficiency plays a surprising role in older adults' falls. Some types of cancers. Vitamin D deficiency may promote spread of some breast cancers. Vitamin D is obtained from food, and supplements are produced by the body in response to sun exposure. A deficiency in vitamin D is associated with tumor progression and metastasis in breast cancer, suggests a new study. Multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis patients tend 13 new 545 to stay out of the sunlight because of heat sensitivity further increasing the risk for vitamin D deficiency. There have been studies that suggest vitamin D deficiency may play a role in immune system function and the development of autoimmune disorders, such as multiple sclerosis. Pneumonia. Vitamin D plays an important role in the community-acquired pneumonia cap. The cause of CAP is associated with both pathogen infection and immune dysfunction. Vitamin D could considerably exert immune functions, so the level of vitamin D may be a susceptible factor of CAP. The relationship between vitamin D and CAP has been extensively studied. As reported by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, when newborns with low vitamin D in vivo grow up to one year old, they have six times higher risks of suffering lung infections than infants with normal vitamin D levels. Another random control case study showed when 1 to 36-month-old pneumonia infants orally took a single high dose of vitamin D3, 100,000 IU, recurrence was basically not found within three months. Thrombosis. Vitamin D can tackle thrombosis by influencing inflammatory pathways, coagulation factors, and endothelium homeostasis in a pleiotropic manner. Several clinical trials have also highlighted the antithrombotic actions of vitamin D. Vitamin D has been found to inhibits in vitro anti-beta-2 GPI antibodies, purified from patients with antiphospholipid syndrome maps induced tissue factor TF expression indicating the association of vitamin D deficiency and decreased inhibition of TF expression and increased coagulation in apps. Tuberculosis Tuberculosis, TB is one of the global health problems causing 2 million deaths a year. It is estimated that approximately one-third of the global population carries latent TB infection, which poses potential health risks of reactivation in the future. Before the use of antibiotics to treat TB, high doses of vitamin D were widely used. Cross-sectional studies indicated that patients with TB possess a decreased 25 OD levels in comparison with the control population. To summarize the role of vitamin D. All these can raise your risk for severe COVID-19 if infected. 
Research shows that obesity and diabetes are linked to low levels of vitamin D. They're also associated with higher death rates or severe COVID-19 symptoms. Inadequacy or deficiency of vitamin D is a global problem. Though recent studies have established vitamin D as a key regulatory molecule in various physiological processes and have proposed it as a promising predictive therapeutic tool still the close association of vitamin D with human health and its deficiency in the body is not widely recognized as a health concern by both common man and physicians. The relation between vitamin D deficiency and the associated risk of various chronic and acute diseases is still obscure and requires intensive research efforts. In recent years, various studies have explored several non-calcemic consequences of vitamin D. There are reports that correlates lower doses of vitamin D with thrombosis and various cardiovascular diseases. Still, there is an impelling need to enhance our knowledge of the molecular pathways regulated influenced via vitamin D and their effect on various organ systems including the cardiovascular system. This would require conducting large-scale intervention clinical trials to firmly establish the association of vitamin D status to cardiovascular health. Additionally, it is important to state that, although deficiency of vitamin D is common and widespread, it can be safely corrected with a variety of supplement types and regimens available, and thus should be identified and addressed in the clinical practice of treating diseases associated with it.